Welcome. Uh, the title of today's notes worksheet is Geometric Sequences and Series. And this represents the second specific type of numerical pattern that we're going to investigate. And so we'll go ahead and take a look at what it entails. And then uh, obviously get a couple formulas out there, one dealing with the sequences and the other dealing with the series. So let's take it uh, in, in the very similar fashion to what we did with the arithmetics. So let's go ahead and get a definition to get us going and then uh, see if we can come up with the first formula today. So in this case, we're going to be talking instead about, instead of a common difference, we're going to be talking about a common ratio. So the ratio of any term, and that's an R by the way, the ratio of any term and the preceding term is constant. So again, instead of a common difference, we're going to be talking today about what a, a common ratio, our R value. And so obviously we'll see what that means as we go through. And I have a very, very similar um, investigation to what we saw yesterday. So uh, we'll lay it out in the three column approach again. And then the idea would be basically after you see the three columns unfold that you would be able to come up with the explicit formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence. So let's give it a try here. Uh, I just have some information to get us started. I'm going to have the value of my first term as positive 3, and this common ratio is going to be 2. And so let's go ahead and, and work numerically in this second column here. So if you get an opportunity, everyone just put a little 3 right there. And then the third column, as I said, humor me for just a moment or two. Let's get an A1 right in there. And so what it basically means, a ratio is, is division, of course a fraction, so to speak. And so what we're looking for is really any term divided by its previous term should be able to give me this common ratio right here, should give me that value of 2. And that's what the definition tells us. Any term divided by the previous term is constant. And in this case, in order to get a common ratio of 2, it looks like that has to be 6 right there. And so as a result, Coming over here, you can kind of see going from one term to the next is I basically took my a sub 1 and multiplied it by r. So I multiplied the 3 times 2 in order to get that 6. And now, everybody, I would just continue. So 6 times 2, there we go. And again, here's our common ratio, 12 over 6. And so as you can see in this case, I'm just continually multiplying by r. So in essence, that would be a sub 1 times r squared for that third term. The fourth term looks to be 24, so let's put that in there. And how did I get from here to here? Well, I just multiplied by another r. And so it, at this stage, it looks like we're a sub 1 times r cubed. Let's see if I can fit one more in here. It looks like that one's going to be 48. And this would be a sub 1 and r to the fourth. And then obviously we would kind of dot, 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 dot. And then the question is, how would you find the nth term? What is the algebraic representation for any term in this type of pattern of numbers? And as a matter of fact, we've, we saw this exact formula, I should say this exact numerical pattern before, and I kind of gave it to you. I forget if it was on sequences one or two. I think it was on two. And we sort of saw that it looks like we're repeatedly multiplying by two, and so what that meant is it was going to be exponential in nature. Um, we're going to call it by a slightly different name today, but you can kind of see how this formula probably would unfold. Okay, well, maybe you've come up with it by now, but basically we're looking for the value of the nth term, and for anything that's geometric, you can see we're going to start with the a sub 1 there, and I'm going to multiply that by r, and as you can see, I'm raising it to a particular power, and that value is changing, and it seems like the relationship to the input is that it's one below the input. So when I was finding the fifth term, we raised it to the fourth. So if I'm finding the nth term, then it's raised to the n minus one. And that looks great. So that's going to be our, our formula for the nth term of a geometric sequence. And what it means to be geometric is that we are continually multiplying by the same number. And another perspective on that is that it has what's called a common ratio. So on your paper, just a couple um, follow-up questions that deal with this piece. 
Now, um, a couple things to sort of note with this um, as we go through. It says, what does the graph of a geometric sequence look like? And like yesterday's lesson, originally I had intended us for, for us to go ahead and graph this using a scatter plot, but I don't think that's uh, necessary at this stage. I think what we'll do is just sort of um, sketch it out up here, and I can kind of show you what it would look like. But if I had you plot inputs and outputs, so n and a sub n, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, well, it would basically look something like this, give or take. Again, not perfect by any means. But you would start to see a graphical pattern form, something like that. And what that basically would entail, and, and I think it makes sense on the nature of the expression, is that it would be discrete points on an exponential curve. Now remember, we're not going to play connect the dot because sequences are not continuous. We go from the first value to the second value to the third to the fourth and to the fifth. There is that jump, of course. So points on an exponential curve. So one thing to note about this, and this only occurs if R is, is positive. Just write that in there. Because unlike when we worked with exponential functions, I should say really continuous exponential functions, um, that value in the expression, and let me just go back one screen so I have a visual for this, this value when we talked about that y equals a times b to the x, this value right here was really b. And we always talked about the fact that b had to be positive. Between 0 and 1 was decay, greater than 1 was growth. Well, what we're going to see here, everybody, with the geometric pattern of numbers is it's very similar in nature, but that value can be negative. So in this case, we saw it as a positive value, and in a positive value, it would form points on an exponential curve. Okay, well, again, we'll see that as we go through the process. Uh, it says, what type of expression is the formula? Of course, it is exponential. So again, it's slightly different. Remember what we saw yesterday. Um, numbers that form a, quote, linear pattern are called arithmetic patterns. Um, numbers that form a, quote, exponential pattern are called geometric. So linear translates to arithmetic, and geometric, I'm sorry, exponential translates to geometric. Okay, uh, what does R represent? Well, let me write it sort of this way. Again, I, I guess I alluded to it. It's almost equivalent to that B value, if you remember, exponential growth and decay. So um, that Y equals A times B to the X. So if R is positive, that would be the situation. And then just in the second piece, how about we put a little asterisk next to this. Just note that R can be negative. So just kind of writing in formally what I had described verbally there, but R can be negative unlike a continuous exponential function. Okay, good. All right, so I think we've got enough in there to kind of play it out. So the two types of numerical patterns that we are investigating, arithmetic, which we saw yesterday, and geometric, which we will see today, and actually a little bit tomorrow as well. So let's just do some examples, kind of get comfortable with the formulas, of course. Um, number one is, is recognition. That is the key. Is it arithmetic? Is it geometric? Or is it neither of the two? If it is either arithmetic or geometric, it's great, because now we have some formulas that will allow us to go from the inputs to the outputs. We can algebraically express it. And so let's uh, try out example one here. It says use the sequence, 4, 2, 1, 1 half, et cetera, and uh, write a formula for the nth term, and then write a formula for the, or then find the twelfth term. Sounds good. The first order of business is to determine what type of pattern this is. Now, it's definitely not arithmetic, down by 2, down by 1, down by 1 half. So, no, it's not going down by the same amount, so it's definitely not arithmetic. And so then I would look to geometric. 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. 1 half divided by 1 is 1 half. And so it looks like it follows the, the geometric pattern here. 
and uh, it looks like our common ratio, and I'm just going to write this below, just kind of thinking about it, would be one half. Excellent. And so as a result here, I think this allows us to go ahead and write our explicit formula fairly fast because now I know that all I have to do is start out with positive 4, use my decay rate, so to speak, my, my 1 half is my R value, and just be careful in order to get it perfectly aligned. It's not to the N, as we saw, it's to the N minus 1. If this is the first term, and this is the second term, and this is the third term, and the fourth term, then it matches up. So we do have to do the 4 times 1 half, and again, what we saw in our pattern that we explored above is it's raised to the n minus 1. And you could see this if you'd like. You can kind of plug in these inputs, and they should get the outputs based on this algebraic rule right here. All right, nice. So what that does is once we go ahead and write our formula and have our, our representation of going from inputs to outputs, well, now given a particular input, given the 12th term, that goes in. And think about this, everyone, what am I going to raise it to? The 11th, the 11th. So just, again, be careful on that piece. And so you're, you're more than welcome to grab your calculator at this stage and just do 4 times 1 half raised to the 11th. I would argue that it looks like we're being expressed in fractions here. So maybe if you can keep this in fraction, in fact, just, I should bring my calculator up just in case. So just sort of an FYI on this, I would do 4 times 1 half raised to the 11th, kind of like this. And then again, rather than expressing it that way, let's go ahead and get it as a fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and hit math and then fraction and hit enter. And that's a little better. I kind of like that piece. So eventually it would get down to 1 over 512. Okay, nice. All right, so again, the first order of business is really to understand is, is it um, arithmetic or is it geometric, and then go from there. All right, good hard one here. Let's see. Um, determine the values of x so that the terms are part of a geometric sequence, then find the value of each term. All right, so I think we saw one similar to this on the previous notes worksheet dealing with arithmetic sequences. This one obviously is a touch harder here. Um, let's see. Well, based on the fact that this has to be geometric, I would argue that by definition, any term divided by its previous term is constant. So I'm going to write just off to the side here and get this going. But it looks like, oh, I have my sign wrong there. So it looks like 8x minus 4 over x plus 4 is equal to our common ratio. Okay, now also, again, just kind of thinking about this piece, any term divided by its previous term is equal to that constant. And that, uh, by definition, is r. And so you can kind of see this piece right here. We've got this equation right here with two variables. That doesn't do us much good. And we have this equation over here with the same two variables, so at least now we're headed in the right direction. And as a matter of fact, you can see this is equal to r, this is equal to r, and so as a result, this should be equal to this. So let's go for it. I have 8x minus 4, and then over x plus 4 equals and then 9x plus 6 over 8x minus 4. All right, interesting. And so let's go ahead and play this out here. Uh, I think we want to go ahead and probably cross multiply. So it looks like just two ratios equivalent to one another. So let's cross multiply these two pieces. This would be 8x minus 4 times 8x minus 4, and then equals 9x plus 6 times x plus 4. All right, so the math is getting a little heavy here in terms of being able to work with these expressions, but I think we can still pull it off. So what I'd ask you to do at this stage is, is maybe work half a step ahead of me, and um, let's see what we end up getting when we FOIL this out. I have, just sort of looking at this piece, 64x squared. That's not going to be pleasant. I'm getting a minus 64x 
and then plus 16. So that's what happened when I foiled that out. And I come to this side over here, and I get a 9x squared. And let's see what I end up getting there. I've got a 42x. Sounds good. 36 and 6. And then a plus 24 right there. Okay. So it's rolling along, slowly but surely. And notice it is quadratic. I have this massive quadratic trinomial over here and similar right over here. Well, any quadratic, everybody, we probably want to set to zero. So I think it's time. You want to start bringing this stuff over? Let's bring those terms on over here. And let's set this thing to zero and see what happens there. So when I subtract that, I'm getting a 55x squared. When I subtract that, yikes, I'm getting a 106x. And when I subtract that, I get minus 8. Okay. Interesting. Well, the, there's good news, bad news. I'm going to go ahead and play this out as if it factors, because I do believe, as ugly as it is, I think it does factor. What I'd ask you to do at this stage is maybe uh, try a little quadratic formula program. Unfortunately, it's not programmed on my calculator um, up on my board, so I'm not going to be able to use, utilize that. But I would ask you to, at this stage, grab your calculator, and do the quadratic formula program. Here's your A, here's your B, here's your C. One of those numbers, I think, is going to translate into, um, it's going to be a decimal. See if you can figure out what that fraction is. And so anyway, I, I'm going to just sort of play out the factoring. I believe it's 55x and x, if I have this right. And I believe it's a minus 2 and a plus 4. So you can write what I'm writing here, or you can just, again, go quadratic formula program on this as I'm looking at this piece. And then as a result, I'm getting two different answers that would potentially work here. So I'm going to have to come up here, everybody, and I end up getting, and see if this matches what you got, but I get negative 4 over 55, and I also get a positive 2. Interesting. All right, so it did say determine the value or values. Uh, notice there is a little plural right there. And so it looks like there are two values of x so that the terms are part of a geometric sequence. Then find the value of each term. All right, well, we got what looks to be, from my perspective, two values of x that would make a geometric uh, sequence. And so now let's go ahead and plug them in. Let's do the easy one first. So everyone, I'm going to go ahead and put the 2 in. And if I put the 2 in, 2 plus 4 certainly gives me 6. So that would be 6 right there. Then I would do 2 in here. 8 times 2 minus 4 would be 12. That sounds good. And then if I put the 2 in here, 9 times 2 plus 6 is 24. Ah, all right. Now that one's pretty easy to see. Do these th three terms right here, do they look like they make up part of a geometric sequence? Yeah, yeah, certainly they do. Now the other one, yikes, ugliness. The good news is I have this on my paper, so it just it takes some of the pressure off for me. But if you put this number in for x into each of the three, and you could just go ahead and do it on the calculator and then do that math fraction function, that's kind of nice. I get these three, and again, if you want to play it out, you're more than welcome to kind of pause it and, and, and do it yourself, but I get 216 over 55, then I get negative 252 over 55, and then I get 294 over 55. And oddly enough, if I take this and divide it by this, and this divided by this, I should get some type of common ratio. Now, as a matter of fact, because since I did that and I kind of shortchanged that piece, I'm going to go ahead and do that just to sort of see this. But let's see if they actually truly are. So I have negative 252, and you guys can just sort of watch this piece if you'd like, or you're more than welcome to go ahead and test it out as well. And then divided by 216, divided by 55. And let's see, so that's what I get. That would be the common ratio right there at this stage. And again, R can be negative. It's just alternating positive, negative, positive, negative. 
Let me do it one more time just to see if we end up getting that exact same um, R value. I'm hoping we do. And so let's see, negative 252 divided by that 55. And there you go. So any term divided by its previous term is a constant. All right. Pretty cool. So I'm going to dot, dot, dot this on both sides there. It doesn't say it's the first, second, or third term or anything like that, but yeah, they, they would be terms in a geometric sequence. All right, definitely a hard one there. But um, this stage, again, you can use your quadratic formula. I just saw that it was going to factor, oddly enough, and uh, hey, it works. So we, uh, we looked at the sequences. Time to transition a little bit and take a look at the series. And so what we're going to do is take a look at what's called the formula for the first n terms of a finite. And if you don't mind, underline that piece for me. Finite geometric series, meaning very simply it's going to be for a certain number of terms. And as a matter of fact, that would imply that at some point we're going to take a look at an infinite geometric series. So, in this case, finite geometric series just means a certain number of terms. In this case, the first n terms. This is one that um, it doesn't really pay for us to go ahead and, and look and explore. I do have a, a proof for this written down uh, somewhere in my notebook. If you'd like to kind of see where this, uh, this particular formula comes from, you're more than welcome to ask. This one doesn't work quite as nicely and easily as the others that we've investigated together. So, anyway, uh, here's what I guess I would ask us to do. Let's go ahead and jot this in here. It uses the first term and it uses R. The only major difference, just in terms of this piece, this is raised to the nth, not the n minus 1. So please be careful of that. If we're adding the first 20 terms, this is raised to the 20th. Please just keep that in mind. And so that is our fourth very specific formula here, um, dealing with, uh, in this case, geometric series, the first n terms. All right, well, let's go ahead and figure a couple of these out. And so I have an example three and example four, and uh, let's give this a try. So it says use the series, and 10, 9, 8.1, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This would be an expression for the nth term. It looks like the first term in this um, algebraic pattern here would be 10, and it looks like the common ratio is 0.9. Let's go ahead and test that out. 9 divided by 10 is definitely 0.9. 8.1 divided by 9 is 0.9. So this is our representation of this pattern of numbers right up here. It is a series as opposed to a sequence. Let's be clear about that. Anytime we're taking the sum of our values in the pattern, it is a series. Okay, and nice. Once I recognize that it is geometric, and that was given here based on this expression, uh, it just says find the sum of the first six terms. So let's give it a try. Um, I would do S sub 6, and let's start out at 10. So that first value goes in, and then just times 1 minus came up with 0.9. Again, this time we're going to raise it to the 6 over 1 minus 0.9. Just be careful on this one, um, just in terms of typing it in. I'm a little extra careful on occasion. This, you know, I type it in a number of different ways, but um, just, just be careful on it. I usually do the, this first, and then I'll multiply by with the a sub 1 on the outside. So if I do that, I just have to be careful that I put the numerator in parentheses, so something like that, and then divide by the denominator. Again, I should be putting it in parentheses, so let me rectify that. Something like that should do, and then I hit Enter and just multiply by that a sub 1. So that's how I pull it off. And I think we could go ahead and, and keep this as the decimal. That's fine by me. So I think we ended up getting about 46.8559 on that one. And so you could see here I've, I've got about 19 just after the first couple terms, and then another uh, 8 after that, so a little about 27.1. Keep adding, keep adding, keep adding here. And by the time I hit the six terms, add them all together, that's what it would give me. All right, find the sum of the first 12. Same deal. Be great for you to work maybe a step ahead in this case. So start with that first one and 
0.9 raised to the 12th, just be careful on that, over 1 minus 0.9. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my calculator up, do the same thing. So again, just I do the top first, 1 minus 0.9 raised to the 12th, little division, and in parentheses again, 1 minus 0.9 right there. Sounds good. And I'll end up getting something a little heavy there, but that's all right. And I'm going to round this out there, so about 71.757 right in there. Perfect. Okay, so just geometric pattern. Um, here's just a nice way to get the sum without a whole lot of issue. All right, I'd like example four. It is as contrived as it gets, but it really does speak to the power of what we would call geometric growth, adding one on top of the other, on top of the other, and so forth. So um, let's go ahead and read it, see, if, see what we can make of it. A company pays you one cent on the first day, two cents on the second day, four cents on the third day, et cetera, et cetera. All right, and then uh, we're going to figure out how much, well, we're, what we're going to try to do is, is work at this company for a month, give or take. So we're going to go 30 days there. And so um, we're going to sort of look at it at the halfway point and then at the end of the month. So back-breaking work. You're going to go to this company and you're going to go 12 hours a day, every day, and this is what they're going to pay you. And the question, of course, is it worth it to spend the month there? Well, let's give it a try. So first order of business is to recognize one thing. My first term would be uh, 0 0.01. My second term would be 0 0.02. My third term would be 0 0.04. I'm just going to write this off to the side right here. That's the first. That's the second. That's the third, et cetera, et cetera. So this is, I'm just going to even put a little one, two, and three just underneath it. Inputs, outputs. And so we, we kind of look at this numerical pattern and what we want to do is come up with an algebraic rule for it. Um, can we come up with the 10th term, the 15th term, the 20th term, the 30th term, et cetera, et cetera? And recognizing that it is geometric is our first step. So when it says, how much do you get paid on the 15th day, I'm hoping everybody is cool with the fact that this is a particular term in a pattern of numbers in a sequence. So it is a sequence, geometric in nature, and we have a formula to, to go ahead and pull that off. So let's go ahead and apply it. Long story short here, I believe we're looking for A sub 15. We're looking for the value of the 15th term. Because it is geometric, we don't have to play guessing games on how to go from input to output. We know it. We just take the first term and we multiply it by the ratio, which is 2. So in this case, your salary is doubling every day. And uh, we're going to raise that to the n minus 1. In this case, if it's the 15th day, we're going to raise it to the 14th. Okay, so as I said, you're going to join this company here, 12 hours a day, back-breaking work. And that first day, when you come home after 12 hours, they've handed you one penny. Second day, another 12 hours, you're tired, you're exhausted, you're wondering why you're doing this. They hand you two cents. And in the third day, four cents, et cetera, et cetera. All right, you get the deal. I'm being melodramatic about it. I'll stop. So um, 0 0.01, grab that calculator, everybody, times 2 raised to the 14th. And I end up getting this. Please confirm one way or the other. But on the 15th day, so at the halfway point, again, two plus weeks of working at this company, at the end of the 15th day, all right, they gave you $163.84. Not bad. You started at a penny, so um, certainly it's a step forward. Now, what happens on the 30th day? So on the 30th day, how much are they going to pay you? The pattern continues. If you can make it all 30 days there, well, let's see how we want to play this out. It looks like I would do my 0.01. And then, of course, raise it to 2 to the 29th. Okay, and so as a result here, on the 30th day, I said you've been second-guessing yourself all month long. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Well, on that 30th day, you would get, I get 
$368,709.12. Worth it. Perfect. So that tells us, of course, how much they pay you at the end of each day, either the 15th day or the 30th day here. Now it says for Part B, what is your total income after 15 days? What is your total income after 30 days? So notice the phrasing is a little different than Part A. Here we went sequence, the value of a particular term in the pattern. Here, everybody, we're going to add up all of our values up until this point. So what is the total income after the 15 days? I want the sum of the first 15 terms. So now let's add everything together. Okay, so notice difference, sequence for part A, series for part B. Okay, so I get 0 0.01, 1 minus, and it looks like 2 to the 15th over 1 minus 2. All right, spectacular. Uh, everyone grab the calculator. You know, certainly pause the video for a minute if you need to, but make sure you're able to get this thing. I have this on my paper, so I'm going to go ahead and jot this down momentarily. But um, let's see, after 15 days, so two plus weeks of this work, uh, let's see, you know, on that 15th day, we made it just under $200. If I add up everything up to and including that, I end up getting about $327.00. And 67 cents. Not too shabby. All right, but that is a lot of work just for that amount of money. But let's see about the 30th. What if I make it the full month at this job? How much total would we make? So let's see, I have 0 0.01, 1 minus 2 all the way to the 30th, and then over 1 minus 2. All right, so I add all that together, and remember our last entry there. That gets added to the previous one, and the previous one, and the previous one. And by the end, if you make it all 30 days, absolutely great. There you go. That's how much you would have taken home. Perfect, over 10 mil. So again, we kind of talk about this in jest, of course, but you can sort of see the power of something that doubles just from one to the next to the next, how quickly it goes up. And so from one cent to $163 and then $163 all the way to $5 million in just in terms of the values. All right, perfect. So good um, sequence and series formulas here, working with something that is what is called geometric. And geometric has that common ratio. So the first order of business when you look at a pattern of numbers is make that decision. Is it arithmetic? Is it geometric? Or is it, is it neither? If it's arithmetic or geometric, we have a formula to represent it. If it's neither, well, then we're going to have to kind of find a way to represent inputs and outputs. All right, guys, just let me know if you have any questions with this. Thanks.